All right, guys, you are seeing this on January 31st. January is officially over, which is a good thing for me because <laughs> January is not easy. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that. February can be a little bit of a struggle too. Um, it's still really cold here in Mass and, you know, the time change hasn't happened yet. But at least you know the light is at the end of the tunnel. Plus in February, at least me, I work at a school, I get a week off. So that always helps. Um, but January... I come back after Christmas vacation and I'm like, oh, I gotta work. <laughs> but anyway, we are here for the last day of Charmaine's Beat the Blues collab. I am the one that is joining her today. If you guys have been watching her, she has started this series starting from January 1st. January 1st, she has posted every single day and found someone to collab with her every single day throughout the entire month of January. And each day includes a giveaway. That is amazing of Charmaine to do 31 giveaways. I cannot imagine being able to be organized enough to do that and together enough to do that and just even to have the money for that. Um, so definitely check out Charmaine. I will be linking her down below. Go check out the other 30 ladies she worked with. I have literally been watching her video every single day. Um, it has brought me so much joy. This has been a really, really, really hard month for me. So me and Charmaine's prompt for this video is five good things that happened in the month of January. And normally when I sit down and film for you guys, I don't usually think too much ahead. I like to be very real and, and I kind of just think what's off the top of my head. But for this video, I said, Taylor, you're going to have dead air. You're going to struggle because this month was hard and you having to say things spur of the moment, you're not going to know what to say. So I really had to sit and I had my notes app open on my phone and I really had to think about it. And I probably sat here a good 20, 30 minutes, which is kind of sad. I'm only asking for five things, but January was tough. You guys let me know how your January was. So before we get into the five things that I figured out that was good for this month, um, and some of them are very small things, but you know what? They were good things and why not focus even on, even if it's small things, focus on the good things. Like I've been saying in my self-care Sunday video sometimes, even just getting out of bed, that can be an accomplishment for that day. But anyway, every day also had a song and Charmaine was talking about doing a playlist for that. I would love that playlist. That would amp me up so much because I did a lot, love a lot of the music. Um, Charmaine picked majority of the songs for 31 days but then when she contacted us she asked if we wanted to change the song so she had contacted me um it was when I was first starting my job like two weeks before Christmas and I did not get back to her right away I was going through a lot and um she was like hey Tay I'm really sorry the days are really filling up but I want you to be in this are you okay with being day 31 um you know I'd like to end the collab with my best friend and I said of course I really appreciate that I really thought, not that I thought she was going to blow me off, which her means an incredible person, but I thought I'm blowing her off. So I wouldn't blame her for not including me in the collab. I literally feel about to tear up. January has been hard, guys. Um, so she, so I looked at 31 and I said, I hope something good happens in January that I can talk about because right now life is not good. And she's like, I'm sure things will get better. And she has been so uplifting and so positive and she's been texting me and I love and appreciate her. So the song, I don't remember what the original song was, but I instantly wanted to change it. And I thought of the perfect song for me and Charmaine's relationship. And it is Count On Me by Bruno Mars. So if you guys know the lyrics, it's literally, um, you can count on me like one, two, three, and I'll be there. And I literally looked it up right before this video and I already forgot the rest, but I know it's like, that's what friends are for, four, uh, four, three, two. It's just really, it's just about friendship. It's about being there for one another. And Charmaine has definitely been there for me. Um, so let's talk about the five things that happened good in this month. So the first thing I want to start with is I talked about it on my mask Monday last week. Um, but it was about the new things for my channel that I'm really excited about. This YouTube channel brings me so much joy. I don't know what I'd be doing right now if it wasn't for this YouTube channel, the way I've been feeling. But focusing on my content and my videos and thumbnails and posting and 
it has like really like just helped ease my mind and forget about other things that I don't want to think about. So the, I have tons of new things happening on my channel. I am posting seven days a week now. Um, so Saturday and Sundays are totally new for me. I didn't usually post on the weekend except for the occasional bundle battle with Wendy on a Wednesday on a on a Saturday. Uh, we just had one go up. So if you guys haven't watched that yet, go watch it because the it has a giveaway and it's still open till February fifth, I believe um go check out the video in the description box all those details but uh from here on out me and Wendy are gonna start doing it on Wednesdays when we do have a mystery buns I'll show you guys because now Saturdays are devoted to my outfits of the week video and I have been loving it and it has gotten such good feedback from you guys you guys really seem to be liking it as well um uh, cause it's been getting a lot of views and a lot of comments and a lot of watch time, which makes me so, so happy. Fashion content is something I've been wanting to do on the channel since I started it. Um, I've always wanted to do like lookbooks and like, um, try on hauls and stuff. So that is stuff I still want to do. I want to show you guys more than just what I'm wearing for the week. I would like to show you when I order clothes, like the, the clothes that comes in and me trying it on and, um, like maybe outfit ideas or like specific, like fall looks, winter looks. But right now for outfits of the week, at least I'm dipping my feet in. Um, I'm also doing self-care Sundays with hope from real life of hope every single Sunday. And that's been fun because it's really creative because self-care means so many different things. So every week I can do something different for that video. And then Fridays, I have posted the occasional vlog. I've been doing that since the summer. Um, but now I am really getting at it. Uh, me and Joe, we have about a date night every week. So I've been kind of using that as the vlog for Fridays. Um, I went to the blue moon a Friday might be something different. Um, I tell you guys, it's kind of like it used to be like my bonus day. So sometimes I'll have like an empties video to show you guys or a review or a cooking video. But I have been loving the vlogs. I've been doing a lot of day in the life or a night in the life or a date night. Um, my cats so and that's been seeming to get really good feedback too so i hope you guys are enjoying that um i really want to i'm still doing hauls and unboxings but i just want to start doing different things and stray away a little from that so i'm not spending as much money so i might get to the point where tuesdays and wednesdays aren't just unboxings and hauls anymore we will see when we get down when we get to that point but i've been really liking doing content that doesn't really like cost me money like obviously i'm buying you know when i go out with joe we're spending money but it's something we would have done anyway i'm just turning on the camera um i have to get dressed for work every day i'm just showing you guys what i'm wearing you know i'm showing you guys my self-care and i really hope you're um enjoying the new content on my channel let me know down below the second thing is my mom's birthday so my mom's birthday is in the middle of january which is usually a struggle because christmas <laughs> just passed and it costs a lot of money um i'm sure you guys have some january birthdays and you know how i feel my ex used to be in january too and his dad so i used to go really broke i feel bad i see all the time for joe's mom because joe's mom has her daughter's birthday her husband's birthday and joe her son's birthday all in november one is the first week of november one's in the middle of november and joe's right at the end of november or the 30th and then she goes right from those three major birthdays right into christmas and one year she even threw like uh her husband was turning a, like a big milestone age and she threw him a birthday party and then joe's sister was turning 21 she threw her a birthday party so it gets expensive real fast so for my mom i kind of kept it simple this year um I surprised her. She wasn't expecting me to go over because it was a work day. I don't normally go over on work days. Um, I usually come straight home because I'm tired. <laughs> Life. Um, but I went over and I surprised her with a bouquet of flowers and some of her favorite keto snacks because she does eat low carb. Um, and she loved it. So yeah, I just really enjoyed spending some quality time with my mom. I'm happy I got to enjoy another birthday with her. Uh, about 13 years ago, my mom had a heart attack. Scared the living hell out of me. She was only... 40 hold on she's she just turned 56 and i want to say it was either 12 or 13 years ago so she was 43 or 44 um when it happened so the fact that she's still around is a blessing every single day so yeah the second thing was celebrating my mom's birthday the third thing <laughs> is a little random um i guess three four and five all kind of have to do with work um but you know what it's little things that make me happy. So the third thing is I am saving tons of freaking gas money right now. I literally am only getting gas about once a month. I literally got gas 
on January 1st and today is January 25th and I just filled up my tank again because now I work in the same city I live in. So, and I literally work five minutes away from my house and gas is expensive, y'all. Anywhere where I can save a little bit of money is absolutely amazing to me, right? So that was number three. Number four is there was two Monday holidays this month in January because New Year's Eve landed on a Sunday. They observed it for, um, monday so we all got to be off january 2nd well not all obviously if you work in the medical field and stuff like that you still worked i used to work at a grocery store and i had to work all the holiday majority of the holidays so i feel your pain but having uh working at a school that is definitely a plus and we got martha luther king off so it was nice having two weeks in the month of january that were four day weeks something good just popped in my head right before i said that and now i can't remember what it was but it was something good, so that's good. I thought of another thing. We'll just keep going with my list then. And number five is I have some news for you guys. So a lot of you guys have been asking for an update about work because I posted a video um, on <coughs> literally my first day of the job as it was a massive one day. I want to say it was December 12th. And that might have not been the greatest decision. I have actually taken it down since because... <laughs> I literally had a breakdown on camera and I was crying and it was literally only my first day I should have waited at least a week or two to give you guys like an update any first day at a new job kind of sucks you don't know anyone you don't know the building you're walking around aimlessly but the whole thing with that video basically was I was letting you guys know that I found out that I was being put in math classes so when you are a special education teacher you don't have a specific degree like a gen ed teacher does. Your degree is not in mathematics or history or ELA. Your degree is in special education. So you have to take, like you take one class just on math, like how to teach math with modifications for children with special needs. And then, you know, so, and you take several classes, one about like communications and one about different disorders. And so it's not specific. So when you have a special education degree or you're in the special education field, they can kind of put you wherever there is an opening. And there was an opening in math. And I did not ask either what subject I was teaching. I said that in that video. So it was kind of on me too, not just the school. Um, but I came from an elementary school where we taught every subject. So I wasn't really thinking about that. So, cause now if you guys did not watch that video, I work at a high school. So it's obviously single subject teaching. And I found out I was going to be like teach. I was going to be in an algebra class. I was going to be in a trigonometry class um, and like a statistics class. And I literally showed you guys the unit circle, which is part of trigonometry. And I, I, I was looking at it and it might as well have been Chinese. And I started crying and I should have gone into more detail. Obviously, I was very emotional. And I'll tell you guys, I was not the main content teacher in the classroom. If I was the main content teacher, I would have been fine. <laughs> There's no way they would do that to anybody. So I'll call him back in a second. It's Joe. So that classroom has gen ed and special ed mixed. So the special ed are at their grade level. So I was with freshmen and seniors. So they were learning freshman out al grade algebra and they were learning senior grade trigonometry. So they just need special modifications. And there is a gen ed teacher there teaching them trigonometry, teaching them algebra. So I am not the one doing the main teaching, but I have to be there for support. I have to help the students. I have to know, you know, kind of like where they struggle, where is their disability? What are we focusing on? How can I help them? So I'm not going to say that it's been easy. It's not because math is still hard for me. Um, so it's kind of hard when I'm struggling a little bit to help the student. But it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be because I have another teacher to support me. So that's that was good news after day one. But the better news is, and the official announcement is, they are moving me out of math. Woohoo! So it only, I got, when the funny thing is, is they told me this on January 12th. So I was there for exactly a month. And I was like, oh my God, yes. 
So um, I was like, good. Because for me to like love my job, I have to feel beneficial. Like I have to feel like I make a difference. Like I'm truly helping. And I don't, I didn't have those feelings in math. Although I will say there was one day where I helped a student and I taught him a little trick when we were working on an equation. And it was like, you know, MXB equals six plus three or whatever. And I show, I showed him how he could literally put in a line, a line through the equal sign. And that's it. That's a, a modification to be so simple. But just that line helped that kid focus on the left of the equation and then the right of the equation. Sometimes they see something as a whole and they have trouble separating it. And he solved the problem. And I was like, oh my God, I helped him with that. But I wasn't having that feeling enough to like love my job. And that's why I loved my previous job, despite me working with behavioral kids and kids that would sometimes spit at me and hit me and kick me. I truly love my job because I really felt like I was making a difference. So, um, they had told me there was no openings, but something opened up because somebody was leaving. So it worked out perfectly. It did not start yet. I start the new rooms when that person leaves. So it will not be till February. So the only, the only thing I can really tell you guys for the month of January is I at least got the announcement that I'm moving and it's going to be four classes. So it's, a, there are six periods in a school day. But two of them are prep periods for teachers. So it's like so we can grade papers and, um, you know, prep our lesson time and, you know, work on progress reports and grades and all that stuff. So there's four classes. Two of them are an ESL class, which is English as a second language. So I'm really happy about that because I do speak a second language. I speak Portuguese, um, which a lot of the children at my school do as well. It's a mixture of Portuguese and Spanish. So I really do feel like I will be beneficial to those kids. Even the kids that speak Spanish, like I may not be able to 100% communicate with them. But, um, you know, at least I'm used to people with accents. At least I know another language that will help. But you're teaching them English. So you don't, And so you don't necessarily have to know Spanish. And I believe the two classes I'm in, they actually do speak English. They need help is with reading and writing. So that's perfect. Um, and Google Translate's a thing, you know. And then the other two classes are going to be social studies. Um, so I'm really excited. I've been observing the teacher who's leaving for the last like two weeks and I've been watching her. So this way I can feel comfortable and get to know the kids and know what's expected of me. So right now she was working on the br three branches of government. Um, so the next step for me that I'm going to be teaching them is like the Bill of Rights and the amendments. And that stuff does interest me. I wouldn't say I'm like a huge history buff, but I loved, you know, I remember I was actually a women's studies major in college and I was like, Ooh, the, I, I remember the 19th amendment is the amendment where I gave women the right to vote. Um, and I'm going to get to go over that amendment with the kids. And the 15th amendment was the, um, the amendment that allowed black people to vote. Um, you know, that's all stuff I'm going to get to. And Black History Month is in February. And me and the other teacher that does social studies, we've already been communicating. And we're thinking about this big fun project for them for February. Um, so I am like really happy with that news. Um, that's why it's not just work that's been making my life hard. Um, I, it's definitely a chunk of it. Uh, because it's just new, you know, I'm like learning how to grade papers and I'm learning how to do progress reports. And I don't, I don't like being the person who's new. Like I like my old job. I liked that I learned the job quickly and that I was promoted and that I knew what I was doing. And I walked, in, I walked into work confident every day, but that can't happen from day one. You know, you got to give yourself time. You got to give yourself patience to grow. Um, I have a mentor, any teacher that any new teacher has a mentor for the first year. And he has been amazing. He's been telling me how great I'm doing and he's giving me so much credit. He's like, I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. I think you're doing really, really well. So I just have to be not so hard on myself and just know that I'm doing the best I can every single day. So that was the five things that were amazing for me in the month of January, especially the last one. I'm very, very excited about that. And saving money on gas is great because <laughs> life is getting expensive, y'all. Um, and Monday holidays are always good. Um, and celebrating a birthday is always great. Um, but yeah, that is it. So you guys let me know what your five favorite things are for the month of January. So these collab videos do include a giveaway. So I'm going to do a mystery bundle because mystery bundles bring me joy. I love opening mystery bundles. So it's going to be a mystery. You're going to get like three to four products, maybe more, depending on um, my generosity that day. And uh, so for the giveaway, you are going to use, what word? Or, use the word 
friends because that's what I was thinking I was like do I want friends or do I want friendship let's do friends but try to let me write this down so I don't forget secret word try to make it blend in with the sentence like oh you know um or should I just do friend it might be hard to make it plural like you could say I love that you and Charmaine are friends I have so many friends yeah, we'll just stick with friends because me and Charmaine also love the show Friends, so it's kind of perfect. Um, just make it blend in a sentence and tell me your five favorite things of the month of January. I always love reading good things. I've been loving watching Charmaine's videos and seeing all these good positive things. And I've been every single person she's collabed with, I've watched their videos as well. It really helped me this month. It really put me in a good um, frame of mind. So I'm really happy that Charmaine came up with this collab. I know she's already talking about doing it for next year, so I'm really excited for that. I'm um, so glad January is almost done and around the corner. I am ready for spring. I am ready for sunshine. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying all the new stuff on my channel. If any of that sound good to you, definitely consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell. To do the gift for the giveaway, you do have to be public subscribed to me and Charmaine. You do have to live within the continental United States. Uh, you have to be 18 years or older. Me and Charmaine are not liable for each other's giveaways. So she's not responsible for mine. I'm not responsible for hers. Hers, I believe, is an international. Mine is only going to be within the United States because shipping is expensive. Um, and once it's out of my hands, I am no longer liable for it. So if you stub your toe on the way to the mailbox or if USPS loses it and all that, can't control that. All the stuff for the giveaway will be in the description box. So definitely check that out. I am keeping mine open. So that you're getting, this is getting posted on the 31st. So I like to keep it open at least a week. So I will keep it open till February 5th. So until this Sunday when you're watching it. And I will announce the winner on a Mask Monday on February 6th. And then you'll have, you know, a few days to contact me so I can get your shipping information and send out that package to you. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. Go check out my friend Charmaine, guys, and be safe.